Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'd like to talk to you about meiosis, one of the great concepts of all time in biology. It's the production of gametes. It's the taking of a diploid cell and reducing it to a haploid cell. And it's basically the process in which uh, we were all conceived, because we're all the result of the fertilization of gametes, both from our mother and our father coming together to produce us. And so it's a really important process. It's very cool. Um, right out of the gate, I can say that um, if you're worried about something completely new, it's not because uh, meiosis is very similar to mitosis. But of course, there are some differences. And you know, to that end, I think I think we should start by contrasting those two things right out of the gate. And so, like, if we had a typical cell like this, and say it had one big piece and one small piece of DNA. And let's say that's from a uh, paternal side. And then we'll say over here is the mother big piece and the mother small piece. And so if you recall, the way we talk about this is we say, hmm, there's two pieces of DNA. There's a big piece and a small piece. And so the number of pieces of different DNA, that would be two. Since they're a pair like this, there's one from the father, one from the mother, one from the father and the mother, we could say this is actually a 2N cell, or there's four to this. We call this a diploid cell, diploid. We say that these uh, are homologous pairs because they contain the same genes. All of that information, I think, is review. What's interesting about this is let's go through mitosis and see how that would work. So. Uh, say that this is the zygote cell, and it's mitosis, the cell's about to divide. Well, the goal of mitosis, if you recall, is to uh, condense the DNA into chromosomes, uh, move them to the middle, separate the sister chromatids to opposite sides of the cell, and then the cell pinches in during cytokinesis. And the goal is to produce two cells that are identical. So the daughter cells are clones of the original uh, so let's let's go through that just to review that. So I'm not going to draw, draw in a lot of detail. Like in other words, this would be interphase. This would be there would be a nucleus right here. You wouldn't even be able to see the DNA. It's kind of loose. All you would see is just a, a nucleus with a colored circle. But let's just pretend that uh, replication is occurring like this. That's occurring during interphase. So the cell is getting ready for mitosis. And so at the onset of mitosis, prophase, the DNA condenses into these uh, bundles called chromosomes. They form during prophase, and then they're pulled to the center of the cell uh, called metaphase. And then in metaphase, uh, the spindle fibers come, and they pull the chromosomes apart from one another, or the sister chromatids, I should say, are, are pulled apart. And so let, let's put a little bit of of drawing into this. And so here's the cell. It's a little bit bigger now. Let's just say that, you know, like this, the nucleus was breaking down. And then so over here, there's no nucleus. And so here's that big chromosome in metaphase. Here's the little chromosome in metaphase. Here is the big one right here and right here. It's a small one. And so the spindle fibers are pulling it apart. So what you get is um, if I increase this, what you get is when the spindle fibers pull this apart, you're going to get like one big piece going that way and one big piece going that way. So that was this one over there, this one over to there. It's a little big. Uh, and then the small one, this one goes over there, this one goes over there, and then same thing over here. Uh, sister chromatids separate, big guy, little guy, big guy, little guy. And then the cell pinches in, ba 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 ba, and you get two cells. Notice here that this cell is also diploid, and this cell is also diploid. And so this is what you call mitosis uh, leading into cytokinesis. You have two daughter cells which are the ad identical to the original cell. Okay, it's pretty good. So how does that differ in meiosis? We'll look at the detail, but I, th I just think a summary is a little bit better. And so let's start off and say, um, if you have that big chromosome, 
It's kind of that big chromosome like that, that little guy like this. That's the father. And then here's the big mother like this. And so what's going to happen? How do you form? I want to form gamete cells. In other words, I want to make meiosis. I want to make gametes, uh, which are haploid cells. This cell right here is a diploid cell or diploid. And it's 2N2 because it, both pairs are present. So the process of meiosis takes place in two parts, something called meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 and 2. So let me go like this. What's going to happen in meiosis 1 and then cytokinesis is that we're going to make two cells. Let me just go like that. There's one cell, two cells. And then these two are going to break up into two more cells. So you're going to get a total of four cells in meiosis. Uh, very exciting. And so what's going to happen is during meiosis 1, let me just, I'll go into detail, but I'm just going to summarize it because I think this is the most important thing and I want to get it out right out of the gate. The, what the big difference in how you create a haploid cell is that this is a diploid cell because it has both father and mother. To create a haploid cell, what has to occur is during meiosis, what's really interesting is that when the spindle fibers come to grab the chromosomes and pull them apart during anaphase, this time in meiosis, they pull the whole chromosome over to one side of the cell. So the big guy goes over to one side and the yellow side, the big yellow, goes over to the other side. And without even, I can put the little one over here and the blue little guy over here, that doesn't matter. What I'm saying is, if you separate the homologous pairs, what you're going to get are two daughter cells that are haploid, because they only have one set. You don't see the, the mother over there. You don't see the father over there. So it's one set. So meiosis 1 creates haploid cells but they're chromosomes and all meiosis 2 is is mitosis meiosis 2 is mitosis it's simply chromosomes form again the sisters are pulled apart and what you get is a big guy there a big guy there a little one there a little one there and a little one there a little one there big piece there uh, big piece there. And so what's interesting is you might be wondering, you know, well, did we leave anything out? Well, if you remember up here on the mother, let me just go on the mother. Let's say that this is A, B, C, D, and then go E, F. Let's say that there's only two strands that make up a, a, a human being, and that it only consists of one, two, three, four, five, six genes when in fact we believe it to be somewhere around 30,000 that makes up a human being. The number changes from time to time. So what's interesting about this is this gamete down here, let's say we're making some sperm cells. I'll put flagella onto them like this. You're like, well, is there anything left out? You know, I, I, I thought meiosis has half the DNA. Well, in fact, what it is is a single copy. And so see this A, B, C, D, E, F? There's also over here E, F, over here D, C. This is too much. This is more than you need. And this is also more than you need. So down here, what you have is A, B, C, D, and then over here is E, F. You have all the DNA in a, in a, in a sex cell. You have all your DNA, but just a single copy. And so this is a haploid cell. And so just looking ahead or backward, depending on, on how you're watching the podcast, when this fertilizes another haploid cell, that's how you get a diploid cell. Like, for example, like this. So A, B, C, D, E, F. And so when these things fuse together, right there, now you've created a diploid cell again. So fertilization restores the diploid number, and meiosis is a, is a successive uh, division of cells, meiosis one and two, in which the first meiosis 
uh, creates haploid cells, and the second one creates uh, sister separation of sister chromatids. Um, we'll look at the, the details of it now, if you don't mind, because really the, the details are not um, a burdensome, but actually they illuminate the discussion a little bit more clear. And so meiosis reduces a chromosome, a chromosome number from diploid to haploid. And so let's take a look at that process. So the steps, when I say steps, I mean prophase, metaphase, anaphase, uh, telophase. But since there's two meioses, there's meiosis one and two, what we, what we like to do is say prophase one, pro, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one. And then the cells divide, cytokinesis. And then the two cells reform again. And uh, they're always there. The, the, the uh, DNA reforms into chromosomes. And then we go through meiosis two, which is pro two, pro meta two, ana two, and tele two. And then the cells divide into four haploid cells. So they resemble mitosis. And both mitosis and meiosis are uh, preceded by DNA replication. And so you see chromosomes at the beginning of prophase. And so there's two uh, consecutive cell divisions, meiosis one and meiosis two, that results in four haploid daughter cells. Notice up here, I think, you know, if, if you were just walking in on this discussion right now, you'd think, well, this is bizarre. You know, I can appreciate how you go from 2N to N, but what's up with the N to the N? You know, that, that can be confusing, but not for you, because I don't mean to do that. Uh, remember up here, what you're dealing with is a father, and just review this, a mother, and so what happens here is the separation of the homologous chromosomes. Let me go what da, what da, 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 and put the mother over there. And the father goes over here. It doesn't matter. And yes, this is a haploid cell because it, it's not a pair anymore. So it's considered to be haploid. So you're like, what's up with that? Well, at this point, you want to separate the sisters. And so this, you know, little known fact that meiosis 2 is mitosis deal with that. <laughs> Think about it. Because what's happening is pro, meta, ana, tela. And so what you get is this, and you get this, which are the two sides of this. And then over here, you get this and this. And so um, chromosomes, chromatids. So this is some cells in interphase. And so during interphase, uh, say that this is in um, a gonad. Say that these are in your ovary, and they're going to form an egg. Or let's say they're in a, a, a testicle, and they're going to form sperm. So they're going to undergo the process of meiosis. And I can just go like this, and you're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, I'm talking about how this cell right here is going to divide into two. Let's say that it's a diploid cell, it's going to make two haploid cells. And then it's going to go like that and like that. And it's going to make four cells that are also haploid. And this is happening in a gonad, and that's where meiosis occurs. So during interphase, you can't see it, but DNA is replicated, and it forms uh, two copies of the DNA. Uh, each side of the chromosome consists of an identical sister chromatid. And so that's what's happening right here. The DNA replicates, and then during prophase, you see the two chromosomes, and then meiosis 1 separates homologous chromosomes. Meiosis 2 separates sister chromatids, and so you get four cells. And so the first division separates the homologs, you know, like that, homologs, and then the second division separates the sister chromatids. So meiosis two is just like mitosis. So there are a couple of other differences other than the separation of homologous chromosomes, which occurs during anaphase one. Uh, let me emphasize something that's really cool that it happens during prophase one that doesn't happen during mitosis prophase. What happens is prophase is good old prophase. In other words, the nuclear membrane begins to break down. The centrioles uh, duplicate. So there's instead of two, there's four. This whole area is called the centrosome. And the spindle fibers start to radiate from the aster. 
and these are the protein tubulin, and these microtubules extend, forming the spindle. And these are really critical because these are like sort of the string that are going to pull the puppets or the chromosomes around. Chromosomes just don't move. If they well, if they they could move, but it would be random movement or diffusion. The chromosomes would be gone free willy all over the cell, and so you need these spindle fibers to push them around and tug them and pull them to where they want to go. So one of the main events that's different in meiosis than in mitosis is this. This is a really interesting thing. You know how we said that one of the chromosomes is from the father and another one's from the mother? So a maternal and a paternal. These During mitosis, the chromosomes are just there in the, in the nucleus is sort of random. But during meiosis, the father one and the mother one come together. They're sort of like dance partners. They kind of line up like this, sort of like a big dance scene at a party from Jane Eyre or something like that. So that the father and the mother come together. And when they come together, we, we use this term. Apologize for the, for the term, but I, I kind of like this term. When the, when the chromosomes come together, a coming together is called a synapse. Usually that people think that the synapse is something between uh, nerve cells, which it is, where two nerve cells come together is called a synapse. But you could have a synapse between individuals where you have like sort of a coming together or an agreement. You have a like minds. And so the, the father and the mother come together and the father and the mother sort of like dance partners, slow dancing. And so since there's one sister, the other sister, the other sister, the other sister, since there's four pieces of DNA, it's, it's actually referred to as a tetrad. So we could simply summarize that and say that tetrads are formed during prophase one of meiosis. So they come together, tetrads are formed. So when the, you're like, the point of this is you should never really uh, take something unless you, you ask this question. Now, why is this? Like, why do they come together? I, I'm not going to remember it. I refuse to remember it unless I know why the tetrads are forming. Why does the mother chromosome have to come together with the father? Why do they synapse? What's the significance? Because I'm not seeing it. So not yet. But check this out. This is a real photograph of the father chromosome and the mother chromosome, the homologous pair. They're coming together. And check it out. They come so close together. Picture like a slow dance, and your favorite uh, slow song is playing. You're dancing here with your partner, and you get so close together that maybe uh, like one of your shoes falls off, and one of his shoes falls off, and you, there's a little swapping. So what I'm telling you is, when the two chromosomes get so physically close together in the in the tetrad, sometimes what happens is one piece of the DNA crosses over the other. It's sort of like, I don't know, you can play around with the analogies. It's sort of like when you're sitting right next to someone and your your legs are touching under the table, footsies, I think it's sometimes called. Um, when they physically cross over like that, there could be a breakage. The point at which they cross over, you got to love this, is called chiasmata. Or you may have heard of this term before, uh, when you cross like a spider in a human, a Spider-Man or Batman or something like this. Those or a, a centaur in, in Harry Potter, part human, part horse. That's Those creatures from mythology are called chimeras. And so it, it, a chiasmata is a cross. So what happens is the father and the mother cross up, and so they're not pure anymore. Let me sort of draw this if I can. Here's the father, like that, and here's the father right here, but a little piece is coming over. Here's the father, and a little piece is coming over. Here's the mother, like over here, like this. And so what happens is if a piece breaks off, what you're going to get, I'm going to have to erase this, what you're going to get here is a little bit of the mother, if I can get that, a little piece of the mother, on one side and over here there might be and it doesn't have to just be two pieces it actually can be multiple pieces but do you see this let me sort of draw it over here on the side instead of just having the father chromosome like that and the mother one 
like that. This is without crossover. Here are the homologous chromosomes coming together. As a result of crossing over, what you get is something that is part uh, the father, and let's go like this, and then over here it's a little bit a mother. And so what's the consequences of this? Well, what the consequences are is this. Let me sort of just come over here. I want to come up here and show you something, what I think is kind of neat. The consequences of this are, are profound. Because if you have a cell like this, let's keep it simple. And you're just going to make like this. And so let's say that there was no crossing over. And so there's no crossing over. So here's the father. Here is the mother, like this. And so what's going to happen during meiosis one is the father's going to go there, the mother's going to go over there, and what you're going to get is a, a blue piece and a yellow piece. But if, if there's a little crossing over, it's kind of neat. If there's a little crossing over, what you'll get is the yellow one coming over like this, with, let's just say, a little bit of blue on it, a blue shoe. And here's the blue one with a little bit of yellow. You're like, well, what, what, what's the big deal? I mean, well, when this divides and this divides, what you're going to get is one gamete is going to be just yellow, and the other one's going to be yellow with a little bit of blue. This one's going to be blue with a little bit of yellow, and this one's going to be completely blue. And so as a result of that, you get four different gametes instead of two different gametes. So crossing over, I'm going to come back to this because it's such a significant thing. I don't want to go over the top, although I'm capable. Um, crossing over creates variation in the gametes. But I don't want to, uh, I'll, I'll bring it up again. Um, I don't want to go too far with it, but I'll just say this. So um, meiosis 1 is to create haploid cells to separate homologous chromosomes. And so the way we're doing this is chromosomes form, they come together, the nuclear membrane disintegrates, spindle fibers form, uh, there's crossing over or not crossing over, it's random, and what's happening is, um, as a result, this is a really cool diagram. As a result, when the chromosomes, homologous chromosomes synapse, there could be a little crossing over, and it creates sort of mosaic sister chromatids. And so instead of having blue, blue, red, red, it's red with a little bit of recombinant here. So there's, so in other words, say that this is, this is a guy, and this guy is producing sperm. But each time he produces sperm, maybe there's uh, a little bit of difference between the sperm. And so therefore, the chance of him, when he has children, having similar children is, is more remote. And you want to create variation in your offspring. And that'll come up when we talk a little bit about evolution. That's a very important thing. So crossing over creates these recombinant gametes. Um, and so it increases variation. So to continue with meiosis 1, once the chromosomes form, they line up in the, in the equatorial center of the cell. And as you know, this is metaphase. And so the, the tetrads come together in the true middle of the cell. And what's happening over here is the main event of meiosis. In anaphase 1, if you can see it here, in anaphase 1, what's happening is the homologous chromosomes are separated. You're like, well, why are homologous chromosomes separated in meiosis and, and, and then in mitosis it's just the sisters? Because of this reason. It's, it's really interesting. It's kind of detailed, but I'll, I'll sort of summarize it. It's, it's, it's the key step, and it's, it's like this. If you have a chromosome like this, really where, what the spindle fibers are attaching to are these kinetochore fibers that are that are protruding from the chromosome like this. But in meiosis, the kinetochore fibers are only coming off of one side of the chromosome. So when the spindle comes to grab it, it's not pulling it apart, but it's going to pull the whole chromosome over. And so this is a cool event. 
if you're pulling the whole chromosome, what, what results is haploid cells because you're separating the homologous pairs. And so this makes haploid cells. And so at the end of this, you, you have telophase. So what's going to happen? The cells are almost ready to divide. The nuclear membranes are, are reforming, and the DNA actually decondenses, and then the cell pinches in, and you have two haploid cells. There's a little period of interphase, but there's no replication during that interphase. So cytokinesis is really the process of, of cell division. And so that completes meiosis 1, and meiosis 1 creates haploid cells, but they're still chromosomes. So if this is human, and I asked you how many chromosomes are in each of these cells, what would you say? If you said 23 chromosomes in each, you would be correct. And so what follows now is these two cells go on in a process called meiosis 2, and it's basically identical to mitosis. So in other words, prophase occurs, uh, the, uh, the chromosomes form. This time, if I, if I were to ask you how come homologous chromosomes don't synapse during prophase 2, you would say, how could they synapse during prophase 2? There are no homologous chromosomes in these cells because the homologs have already been separated, so these could never come together. So there, you can never have crossing over I love that kind of a question. Why doesn't crossing over occur during prophase 2? Because there's no homologous chromosomes. Crossing over can only occur when the two homologous chromosomes synapse, and they're very similar to one another, and that's why there can be a physical exchange of the DNA. And so um, there's metaphase, and then there's anaphase, and then there's uh, telophase. And so going through that quickly, but... Metaphase, they line up. Anaphase, the sister chromatids separate. They go to opposite sides of the cell. And then you have the process of telophase or telophase 2, and then cytokinesis forming the two cells. But of course, there's two of them doing that, so there's a total of four gametes that are produced. And so that's, that's pretty neat. And so um, there's some similarities and some key differences between the two. Meiosis reduces the number of... Uh, of the DNA in half, they produce four cells instead of two, and uh, they produce uh, the gamete cells. And so this is a, a great diagram to sort of finish in terms of like uh, slides on this. You can sort of compare and contrast. Over here in meiosis, you can see how the main event is the homologous chromosomes separate, and that's why you have haploid cells. And then in meiosis two, the sister chromatids. So this process right here, right down here where I'm pointing with these arrows, is mitosis. That's mitosis. So in other words, prophase, anatella, and then cytokinesis. This is creating two diploid cells. Here's one diploid cell. Here are now two diploid cells. This is how we grow. This is how, what happens when we um, or playing soccer and we fall down and we scrape our knee and, and our skin cells are growing back. We're producing identical clone skin cells through the process of mitosis. Over here is where you're taking in your ovary a diploid cell and producing a haploid egg and this will be the future child. This will be your future child. And um, not in this discussion but it's really neat that the, the egg is released from the ovary in the process of ovulation, and then perhaps there's fertilization and it produces the child as a result of it. Pretty awesome. Um, and then let me conclude with, I think, a very interesting several uh, videos on the process. This is a video here showing um, what happens during prophase one, which is crossing over. Look at this. The homologs are synapsing, forming the tetrad. Uh, there's a physical exchange that occurs, and so there's some crossing over at this point. Remember that the point of crossover is called chiasmata. And so at this point, um, the cell undergoes meiosis 1, which separates the homologs, and then meiosis 2. And so with crossing over, you make four different kinds of gametes, but without crossing over, you make... Uh, just two different kinds. And the ones that are, are 
So these are like the parents and those are different. Those are recombinants. So that's pretty cool. And then I also want to show you this. This is a great little short video uh, summarizing it. So here's a cell. I will uh, sort of animate this and also narrate it more, more likely. Uh, the homologs are coming together. They're synapsing. This is prophase one. Look at that. They're dancing. There's a little exchange called crossing over. Ah, no more nucleus. Oh, no. And then the spindle fibers are coming. So this is sort of like that pro-metaphase. And they grab the chromosomes. They grab them and they pull them to the true center of the cell. Remember, this is three-dimensional. So it's sort of like a big water balloon. So the chromosomes are there. And then the spindle fibers only connect to the kinetochores, which are coming off of just one side only, not on both sides. And so when they interact with that, that during anaphase one is a key event. That's the separation of homologous chromosomes. And so this is what's making a haploid cell, because before it was diploid. And so eventually the chromosomes arrive, they begin to decondense, new nuclear envelopes form, the cell divides, and you have two haploid cells. But we're not finished yet. That's just the end of meiosis one. Because what's going to happen next is meiosis 2. But during the interphase, there's no replication. So prophase 2, it sort of just picks up where you left off. So it's prophase, again, no nucleus. Then the spindle fibers pull those chromosomes to the middle. The spindle fibers will then separate the sister chromatids. This is anaphase 2. And then they arrive. First thing you do when you get back to the hotel is unpack so the the Sister chromatids decondense into chromatin, new nuclear membranes form, and then both those cells divide, and you have four gamete cells. Pretty cool. And then finally, um, where is it? This is a good one. And so what you have going here is sort of a, a recap of what we've been talking about. So during prophase 1, the chromosomes form. So that's prophase 1. Um, you can see the centrosome, which is where the centrioles are located. Those are in, there's now two pair, and they're forming the basket. And then now in the nucleus, meanwhile, during prophase, chromosomes are forming, and then they come together. Look at them. The father and the mother are, are coming together. Look here and up there. They're all coming together or synapsing. And then there's a little twisting going on in the, in the dance. Uh, a little crossing over. The nuclear membrane is breaking down. The spindle basket is forming, and it's going to start pulling on all those tetrads and pulling them to the true middle of the cell because they're not going to go there on their own. So that, <laughs> so they're going to grab the chromosomes and yank them to the middle of the cell. They look like they're reluctant to go there. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the case. But metaphase one, they're all line up like this, and then when the spindle depolymerizes and it starts to pull. Anaphase 1 is how the homologous chromosomes are separated. And that is, I'm sorry, that is what creates, right there, watch this, this is what creates, that right there is what creates haploid cells when you separate homologous pairs because they're no longer diploid. And so very quickly, it's telophase one, they arrive, they decondense, the cells divide into two, you get two haploid cells, and then these cells are going to need to undergo meiosis two, which is just like mitosis. So in other words, chromosomes form during prophase, they get moved to the center during metaphase, the spindle pulls them apart during anaphase. Sister chromatids get pulled apart. They decondense. Two nuclear um, envelopes reform. The cell pinches in, and you get four daughter cells that will eventually become the sperm. And then those, you know, where are we right now? We're in the gonad. What gonad? If it's a man, it'll be the testy. And so if you back, you know, uh, there's the sperm right there, and you back out like this, and then the result of this is <laughs> the result of this is fertilization and of course fertilization the point of fertilization is to create the <laughs> let me go right there is to produce the baby 
So the union of the sperm and the egg produces the zygote, and then that grows through mitosis into an embryo fetus, and then the baby is born. And then, <laughs> um, then you're <laughs> a great joy, but then you're in big trouble. All right, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed our discussion of meiosis.